Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Rocket Cars has released their latest update, and it's completely free. Unless it's not, then it's going to cost you 10 quid. And should developers remove their old, busted Linux ports in favor of Proton? Question mark. I kind of believe the answer is yes. More on that in a minute. Steam Link gets some new input options. Just make sure not to drop them in the bathroom. And do you love com or uh, do you love roller coasters and hate communism? We have a project for you. Steam opens the floodgates. Proton gets to see the stable client, and CS Global Offensive offers a free option in Forever Alone mode. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Vin Stone, old man Vin, gatekeeper Vin. They like to call me joint every week by a man up north. That is one Jordan Svong. Get it P right. Master Jordan, they call P, me. Right. And speaking of P, uh, that's one P man, Pedro Plage Marizzo, nay, Hello. the Porto gamer himself, Mateus from Britannia. And together with you, joining us in Discord, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form that last little bit known as Cocaine. Suck it, YouTube. You didn't pick it up. Um, <laughs> before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life organs here. Uh, we spent the entirety, mostly the entirety of the pre pre super shows, figuring out the extortion rate it's going to cost to send our old mixer. What old mixer? Didn't you just get that to Space Canada? It's going to cost a lot, but we're going to do it because I got a new old mixer. It's like a hipster mixer. It's 15 years old. There's somebody watching right now. It's like, I'm not 15. Anyway, that's the thing. We're waiting for it to explode because it's full of uh, really flammable stuff right now. Because I, when I got it, uh, it was kind of covered in what can only be described as a thin layer of shame. So it's <laughs> probably done something wrong in its past <laughs> life. Jordan, what's up, baby? Well, we did a, we did a very special stream on Thursday where we, we streamed a bit of a tabletop RPG. I'm so excited about that. I'm interested in soliciting all of y'all feedback, all of y'all's feedback. Mm. Whatever, whatever, whatever the grammatically appropriate thing there is, uh, because I'm because uh, a bunch of us are interested in doing some more stuff. So if you want to see it, definitely let us know. Otherwise, I've been watching Preacher. Uh, Ven, I, I, fi I finally get what uh, Ven's been talking about about the uh, thing in the second episode. Mm -hmm. It's it's pretty solid. <laughs> it's legit. Yep. And over here, well, I uh, I finished the thing. Really big thing. It's got look. It's got the logo, and you can see the Noctua fat inside, and it shines a pretty, pretty glow of purple. And yeah, it's got two wireless antennas, because, yeah, why not? Stick them uh, up your nose! <laughs> it's, uh, it's, for the most part, hardware-wise, it's finished. So I just need the software to catch up and let me actually boot it reliably uh, to uh, actually call it a proper Steam box. Bravo. All right. Uh, golf, clap. Uh, golf clap. Okay, we're doing golf clubs. Phrasing. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. What's horse up to this golf week, club. baby? We, uh, the horse is like full of shit this week, man. I mean, the the the, the, the horse has decided that it's uh, done being a beta and it wants to alpha up. It's the Steam Linux update. Update. Okay. And yes, Steam client update released. It's the stable client. Uh, you know it. You love it. You probably hate it. Uh, chances are, if you're on Linux, you're actually running the beta and you already have all of this. So it doesn't really matter. But for those of you, very few who are not, well, now you can play with the protons. Yes. So uh, the Steam Play beta, uh, if you're on the stable client, will now let you run all those Windows games if you enable Wild West mode. Otherwise, uh, only the games that you have in your library, which are currently a part of the whitelist, will show up for you. But you really do want to enable Wild West mode. Let's be honest. It's well, can you really call it Wild West games. mode once you walk into it? Well, I saw that and I'm like, oh, <laughs> man, like a week later, they went from the beta client. It's like, OK, standard client, Wild West, let's do this. Uh, grab some popcorn, lads, because I do believe we're in for a ride. Yeah. Yeah. At the, at the same time, though, I totally understand why people would not be on the beta client, just because, you know, the beta client sometimes has a couple fuck-ups, especially with, like, the Adding overlay frames. or the community stuff. Yeah, like, it, there, there, there's definitely some problems. Although, there is no, uh, Proton's not the only thing that comes with this update. Uh, now you can right-click join with the new Steam overlay again. So thank you, Val, for restoring functionality that has been there for, I'm going to say, about eight years, <laughs> nine years, something like that. Um, but... It's it's interesting now now that Proton is out in the wild, people are using it. Um, there's 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 a little bit of controversy riling up because uh, 
Um, pe- there, there, are, there are some games that were ported by less than ideal means. I'm looking at you, mm-hmm. Saints Row. That you might want to play with the Protons because it'll probably perform a little better, and you're not going to support uh, certain companies that will not be named. So it would be it, it would be nice maybe to have an option to have the Proton version versus the native version. Although. I, I was thinking about this. It could just encourage devs to shit out a one-time native port and then never address it again. Be like, we're supporting Linux, but they're already kind of doing that. I was so. about to say, first off, that they're not 100% going to be doing that. Um, if you do want to play with uh, Proton, Valve, I know you're watching. Call me, Gabe. Hey, y'all motherfuckers need to fix Steam starting between displays on the same X screen. All right? This has been an issue for a long time. If you're just using like X screen zero for like three monitors, Proton inherits that bullshit and flips mm-hmm. the hell out on a regular basis. Um, and if you do what I normally do, like a normal person, I have my show notes monitor, which is an um, portrait mode on a separate X screen, X screen one. It's just not having it at all. It's like, you know what? It's, you just spin the wheel. It's like, I'm going to try to start this game on this monitor. You better hope there's a config file and you can get in windowed version or you're not going to play this game. But that's what your issue is. If you're at home, if you have separate X screens, you're just going to basically switch everything and put them all on one X screen. I agree with you, uh, Jordan, since that was kind of what I pointed out in the notes, is uh, at least give us the option to try to play it with yes. Proton. Pedro? Yeah, it's uh no. Give people the option, you know. Just don't uh, go around removing crappy uh, Linux ports. Give people the option to play either the crap port or the Proton version, and I think everyone will be happy. And I was actually surprised to see just uh, how quickly Valve actually got around to pushing this to the stable client. But I guess that uh, overwhelmingly positive uh, response that Proton just uh, well, every single Linux outlet out there was uh, showering its praise. So I guess Valve time got a little bit expedited, as it were. I I just <laughs> thought of one interesting thing. Um, you know those feral games that have multiplayer that only work with Linux versus Linux? It would be really yes. nice if you had the Proton option so you could play these multiplayer games with, you know, your friends. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's definitely... I, I do want, before we get off this topic, we've spent a long time with it, is... My favorite part of all of this Proton nonsense, the best part, the sweetest part from old gatekeeping Vin is uh, watching, F, not everyone, anyone watching this show doesn't have this issue, but online, watching watching the people scramble to replace Game X. Because like, well, when Game X is playable on Linux, I'm going to switch to Linux full time. Then they're like, fuck, uh, I mean, I meant this other game that I felt that doesn't work on Linux now. That was fucking adorable. I loved it. It's even gotten to the point where some people are still throwing, like, bringing back something I hadn't seen in a while. It's like, well, uh, a, when Adobe product X works <laughs> on Linux, and I'm like, motherfucker, you're 14. The only Adobe product you've ever used was Flash. Seriously. Pirated, no, no, pirated Photoshop. Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> so how do I know whether or not my Steam Play title is compatible on the Linux? Hmm. You 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 sacrifice a chicken and you, you you drain the blood into the bowl with the runes and then you hope for the best. Yep. Or, or you could uh, check out this. All this business is going to be in our show notes. Uh, so yellow. Yeah, man. Uh, Steam compatibility reports. You type it in and you can do a search. What do we have? Currently, twenty seven official supported titles. Doki doki. Hey, man. That's what everyone's looking for. Beat Saber. Bunch of games the kids are playing. The Battlefront. I was like, oh, that. Oh, the old one. Never mind. Hey, the old one was the good one. Okay, whatevs. Uh, but there's thousands that technically do work to varying degrees. And I think that's pretty good, man. And you can, you know, just, let's do a search. Uh, what? Uh, whoa, whoa, give me a game, Pedro. Fallout. Fallout. I don't know. I'd, I'd just like to be clear that Doom 2 is not the sequel to that Doom in front of it. Just, just pointing that out. So what we have is we have a status, we have the date it was tested, we have notes, which is good, distribution, mm-hmm. driver, specs, and Proton versions, because there's the stable and there's the unstable, which... They, they, they just released an update to it as well. It's yeah, like they did. It's like 7.5 or whatever. Yeah. So you can go through this. This is very well, and this site is constantly evolving, and just in the past yep. week since it's been up, 
And mm. it's a very good resource. What's the uh, URL for this business so the people can play in the home game can... Uh, it it's, is uh, spcr.netlify.com. Links in our show notes. Uh, I would warn, though, against visiting this on your mobile browser. It, it That site is not mobile optimized. It's kind of a nitpick, but, you know, I, I have to do all my show notes on the phone these days. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but the, uh, I, 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 I asked the question just because I wasn't sure because I couldn't see it on my phone. But they, they, they do they do have a sort of wine app DB style rating, which is nice because now you can sort of at a glance figure out, oh, what can I what kind of mm-hmm. shit can I expect when I'm trying to play game X? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's uh, it's good to have a pretty GUI instead of just having to wait for that massive Google Docs spreadsheet to load and then hitting control F to the, find the, the game that you want. Massive? Mahusive. Musive, yeah. <laughs> okay, just ignore an entire syllable, Jordan. Right, uh, so the Steam DB uh, has been a bit of a source of news for the, um, the Linux community uh, ever since uh, the Linux client for Steam came out. And they had a dedicated page for Steam OS and Linux products available through Steam. And now, if you go to that page, they have a teeny tiny little uh, red box. It is no more. Yeah, a teeny tiny red box that says, this page has outlived its usefulness and will be going away soon. If you want to see which games support Linux, you can use the search or the sales page to see which Linux games are currently on sale. So, yeah, that's... It's it's going away. I guess it served its purpose, and nowadays, yeah, you just yeah, kind the, of the, expect the, they've they brought the sort of tooling as like generic search options. So now you can filter yeah. by platform and so on. So yeah, the, the no longer warrants a dedicated page. Hmm. Can, yes. can can we start playing Amazing Grace right now? <laughs> uh, uh, no. How sweet the sound. No, how about not? Steam Link got a little bit of an update though. Uh, it did, yeah. Uh, the Steam Link app, which allows you to play Steam games on your tablet. Although previously you needed a Bluetooth capable or capable controller, capable. you don't need it anymore. Capable. They got touch controls. Capable. <laughs> it's 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 so so many caps. It's bust Canadian. a cap in your. I'll bust a cap <laughs> in your ass. Um, but yeah, the, uh, it is a first class citizen in Steam input, according to this article. Um, which is good because um, it really lowers the barrier of entry for using the link up because not everyone has mm-hmm. a Bluetooth capable controller. Those things can get kind of expensive if you're on a budget. Uh, what'd be really, really neat though is if they kind of did the uh, the Nintendo Wii U thing where you could seamlessly cut a game from playing it on just your PC or your Steam box to your tablet, mm-hmm. and then you can just take it to the bathroom and you can play it on the toilet. Uh, that would, yeah, that, it would be it would be a nice. No, that little, would be uh, a fucking horrible idea. Then people would like die of. Uh, they, yeah, they Elvis. Yeah, they, they would Elvis, and you're not you're not supposed to poop for that long, and you get you would you'd be the first victim too. So no, I know. <laughs> well, you guys, you want me dead? This has been like the recurring theme. I for want six you years. dead, but I need it on camera, motherfucker. So well, you, my yeah. tablet has a camera on it, so you'll see. You'll listen, see the, listen. Sort of lower. Bring the toilet in there. Then, then we can we we can work something out. Mm-hmm. Either that or Come really, yeah. stay stay tuned for next week, ladies hey, and gentlemen. Hey, wait, hang on. <laughs> to just bring it up to your roommate. Be like, so what are your thoughts about putting a drop cam in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just to see how you can approach that. Pedro, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, it's giving it that kind of functionality would make it like the Chromecast of video games, and we kind of need something like that. Need is a strong word. I think I, along with many people, wouldn't mind the option of just grabbing the tablet and continuing to play the game while I go to the toilet, and then continuing to play the game on my way back. And, and yeah, and walk into a wall or stub your toe or something. <laughs> Everyone's gonna die if this gets introduced. It's gonna be fantastic. Mm. I wholeheartedly endorse this idea. So uh, we got to take a look. Uh, something that took place this week is. Um, what do you, Nidhogg? Yes. Nidhogg, Which is yep. a game. And that's <laughs> just a, something that we're going to see happen. Um, Sil L. Mont writes, uh, he's like, since there's a Steam Play for Linux, titles available since yesterday, please deactivate. Ow, that's spelling. <laughs> he's, he's, he's from the Nether Realm, right? He's from Mortal the Kombat. broken <laughs> Linux version of the game. With the new Steam Play, you'd be able to install uh, Nidhogg, uh, even on Linux and all that. But Jordan, you said the only in this game's depot is the soundtrack, right? Yes, ac- according, according to this, the Linux version, quote-unquote, is, is not a zero-byte download because it does install the soundtrack, but that's about it. Um, 
And I was I was a little cheesed because they announced as well the development on the native version of Nidhogg had stopped. And I was actually interested in this game. It's a fun little multiplayer dueling sword fighting game. Um, yeah. But now now they're just like, well, too fucking bad. Now you just can't play it. Period. So go fuck yourself. Oh, um, is this what Bethesda is going to do to their games? And 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 the, and the, this is sort of what we were talking about. Why you why in the previous story? Why you kind of need this option to play the mm-hmm. proton versus non proton game because. D- and it, I, I, th- I think that concern is very valid, and we're we're seeing it right now. So, and I, may, maybe the reaction to this will c- make devs think twice before pulling something like this, but I doubt it. Yeah, and honestly, going back to the previous point, I really would like the option. I think everyone would like the option. So, if the port is subpar, or is it just outright broken, or it doesn't even contain the game files, then yes, let people choose to play with Proton instead. That's options. We like options over here on Linux. It is a thing, but, you know, even going back to what Jordan was saying, like being able to play some of the Feral ports with Mold Feral will be like, no, don't let people do that. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I can see both sides of the argument. So, Pedro, CSGO has went free, but it's only if you want to play it in the best mode. Yeah, no, it's in forever alone mode. No, so uh, with the um, London 2018 tournament, uh, they decided to release a bit of a feature that will uh, let you let whoever still doesn't have a Counter Strike Global Offensive, they will let uh, people play for free. There's a separate store entry for it. It's the CSGO free option. You could just download it. No, and no, not play. CSGO, fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure, Daddy. <laughs> Uh, and you, yeah, you basically get to fuck with yourself and maybe some bots because you won't be able to join any online matches. They did have some more updates for uh, maps, and they added panorama mode. Uh, they um, for the UI. Uh, if you're on a low end machine, it should run much better now. Uh, they changed some of the uh, textures around in Mirage. And they fixed a couple of uh, other niggling issues. But yeah, it's uh, it's free. But at this point, if you wanted to play Counter-Strike Global Offensive, you already have it. And I don't know. I, you probably won't carry either way because most people already do have it. CSGO <laughs> is like one of those. It's kind of rare for a first-person shooter in that it falls into that category of it's it's that game that's your thing or it's not. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, like because th- there are there are a lot of diehard CS fans. I played a lot of it back in high school. Um, but the the whole point of Counter Strike is multiplayer. It was a multiplayer mod for Half Life originally, and there's no real value that this provides other than getting good at playing bots in CS:GO won't help you against actual people. So I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is this is true, but I mean, at CS:GO, CS:GO was one of the earlier titles Valve released for Linux because it's like. That's why I owned a copy because back in those days, it was like, oh, yeah. new game. <laughs> I'll just buy it. Whatever. I'll I, th- I, I think it was. It may have been number two, right? Because uh, TFT was the first one they released. Then it was CS:GO, yeah. and then it was Left 4 Dead. Mm. I think someone, someone, some, some, some able to correct me on that. Anyways, hey man, you got ten bucks. Hey man, Rocket League. Uh, new thing is out. Even though it says Half Life Two, why does it do that? I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> it's the news. You got to scroll down past <laughs> that. Where's it at? I'm lost. <laughs> no, 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 no. no you see, Half Life Three. Half Life Three confirmed. It. It turns out Half Life Three is actually just Rocket League. Really? Come on. Where's Pass. that? Oh wow, it's a, it's a long one. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> it's thing, man. They got the Rocket Pass. It's out. Uh, it's all cosmetic, though, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, it is cosmetic, even though the uh, different uh, little. What are you called? Chassis that you have for your cars. I, I they have a proper name. I just yeah. Uh, they will have different hitboxes, and someone will complain that it's oh, it's pay to win. So uh, you can always pay to win, Pedro. To that. <laughs> but they say uh, that you will be able to uh, unlock everything, and next week the rocket pass will be live. So starting Monday, you could expect it probably by late Friday. Uh, they also, just before that, they released a teeny tiny little hotfix, which uh, kind of well, it uh, 
I saw it and I'm like, oh, that pissed a lot of people off. Then I went to the Steam forums. Oh, yeah, that pissed a lot of people off. Uh, with Hotfix V151, they fixed unintended changes to ball physics that affected dribbling, flicking, and other similar mechanics. Yeah, fuck with sexy. the ball physics. Yeah, fuck but, with the ball physics. But did they fuck with the puck physics or the cube physics? Here's the thing. Here's the thing, man. When Pedro said that, I was like, oh, oh, that's why. Because on our Rocket League, the re-online was tangible. 100%. Yeah. And here's the thing. This, is, this confused me. If you've put enough hours into this game to notice shit like that, because let's face it, the three of us, we're like, I hit the ball. Yeah, <laughs> and we get happy stick around for the after shows, and if you want to see some of that, um, you know, uh, pro level playing that we do. But if you've put enough hours to realize that the physics are slightly off, think about your investment versus return, man. I mean, at most, what have you paid twenty twenty what sticky caches for this thing, and you've probably got thousands of hours into it. Mm -hmm. Calm your tits for a minute. Let them like just don't don't go full 12 year old immediately is like your re reflex reaction right maybe your sure. reflexes <laughs> reflexes <laughs> it's the no it's rocket it's rocket league people are just going to re over the slightest things well no, okay let, let, let's rewind that's any multiplayer game anyone makes some slight balance yeah. update and everyone will collectively lose their shit because online communities are toxic surprise mm. surprise <laughs> all right um I gotta get. I gotta give these guys a hand, though. Uh, hand of Fate Two is getting an update. Uh, we threw chairs out of this uh, sometime last year, and one of the complaints that we had was that the combat was, despite being a core aspect of the game, it's a little bit fucky, especially with the move queuing and the fact that you can just roll away and hunt and peck, and every level will take two hours to finish, but you can reliably beat every level. Mm -hmm. um, but so they've heard you. They're making some adjustments that are going to be coming out soon. Uh, actually, in the coming week, um, they're they're uh, they're changing uh, they're changing uh, abilities so that they have uses for combat encounters. Uh, they've tweaked the evasion and the timing for um, scheduling moves. So maybe maybe I, it, it, it might be worth to take another look at it. Maybe they've actually addressed a lot man. of the I'm issues. I'm going to take the Pepsi challenge with this because uh, here's the thing with Hand of Fate: like the card aspect of it, give two fucks. That just gets in my way. Uh, they drastically improved the combat versus Hand of Fate 1. But what you pointed out is 100% legit. Once you realize that roll attack, you can just keep rolling. You not take any damage. The fight, that's when I quit playing. I was like, oh, I can just, all right, I can just win. There's no challenge to it anymore. If they unfucked that, I'd be very happy, Pedro. Yeah, they changed it. it. Remains to be seen if it'll be for the better. I really hope it is because Hand of Fate Two, much like the first one, is a very good game. Uh, it's definitely my bag, and yeah, it would be awesome to get. It's. I'm guessing the combat will still be heavily reliant on the dodging and the parrying. Well, maybe. But, the, oh, go ahead. Go but, ahead. But if they can improve on those, or at least make the fights less stupidly easy uh if you're just rolling around all the time yeah well or or Please. like actually make make the dodge and parry thing worthwhile because like it was nigh impossible to actually uh to actually like get a block or a parry in almost yeah, so true. you had to you had to roll so I, I would like to see the combat balance so that it encourages you to be like to have like the power fantasy and be the badass with the sword or the two knives or whatever and get to the middle of a bunch of fucking enemies well lads maybe the new strategy after the update will be running backwards Maybe, but I, I I hate that. Uh, so this is this is a this is a little mod. Uh, it's on the Steam Workshop for uh, Serious Sam Fusion 2017, and it is they, they've implemented. I hate running backwards, uh, or at least a couple of the levels. Uh, so now you can play it in first person mode. They they've kept all the blocky graphics and whatnot. Um, apparently there's multiplayer. So. This might be fun to look at on like a Thursday, just because I, I like I like me some Sam. If they can if they can mm -hmm. figure out how to sort of like translate the the two D run uh, shoot 'em up thing to a first person, I think this would actually be pretty fun. Um, this seems to be a one and done thing though. He's not or the who, whoever developed this is not doesn't seem to be so inclined as to port the entire game over, which is fair because he's just doing this for yeah. fun. I tried it. I can get it to load um, the splash screen. You can set up launch option for it i'm it, it kind of poops itself there's two levels when you try to launch those it's probably you know 
case it's a file system or something like that. I didn't want to play it bad enough to figure that out. I'm sure it's already been sorted, but yeah, there's not a whole lot to, cause you know, the entire game is just uh two point. Well, it's 3d shown as 2.5d. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's just, you know, changing the camera angle and probably adding some weapon models and you're done, mm-hmm. but it looks neat. Yeah. Although I'm pretty sure uh, it would look weird uh, playing that game in first person, constantly running backwards and you just okay, that's annoying. I'm I'm I'm, I'm yeah. sure I'm sure snakes really like it because you just got to hammer on the S key a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, speak- oh, I know it's it's terrible. I oh. hope that give you. Yeah, Splash Blast Panic. It's a it's a thing coming out. It has a demo. You can you're going to be picking it up for about fifteen Canadian. Uh, and basically, if Towerfall and Smash Bros had a baby. This would be it. Um, your your, mm-hmm. your goal is to knock people off the platforms and down into the ground. Uh, supposedly, it has online multiplayer, or it might. Because what was it, then? What was that game where it said multiplayer on the Steam store? But like that was the you know, uh, Tux, not Tux, but it was the kart racing thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. This so I we, can we, confirm. This does have multi online multiplayer. Okay, it does have online multiplayer. So good, good on them for that. But I mean, it looks like an okay party game. Mm-hmm. Um, it's priced all right. Um, apparently, all you need is an Ubuntu Live CD, which is interesting. <laughs> um, but uh, it's 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 def- it's definitely a thing. No, no, Look, no you it, need it looks- uh, you need a twelve oh four CD plus DMOS. You have to install DMOS after you've installed Ubuntu. Yeah, you, you, you got you to glue oh, the CDs no, together right. and stick them in your drive. <laughs> that that's how it works. Uh, uh, Listen 100%. To us. Yeah, we're, we're science. Sci- science. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, if they reply to my email, this could uh, very well turn into another uh, game that uh, starts showing up during our after shows. I, I was about to say, it's not going to show up in your Tuesday Forever Alone version. Uh, no. Because well, that distracts <laughs> people from Pedro and only Pedro and only ever Pedro. Go check it out. Tuesday and Thursday, uh, They these two psychopaths have their own shows, and Pedro usually does Forever Alone run on sentence for an entire hour. It's brilliant. He did some Ch- Chernobyl. Stalker. Stalker with a proton. And uh, Jordan like did, I don't know, tabletop something with lasers. Yeah. With lasers, yeah. One last thing before we get out of here. Indeed. And the last thing is something that I've been getting emails for years now. Uh, I guess they uh, must have gotten my email from somewhere and they've been sending, yeah, the Universum, it's totally coming out. It's totally coming out and it's out in early access. Okay. So it's a god game uh, where you manage multiple planets and you can have, uh, you can choose to focus on a, uh, a single civilization. Look at the price on Brad. Fuck that. Yes. <laughs> it's a uh, 20 pounds, 69, uh, 10% off right now here. So it's that'll be 30, about listen, 30, man, 20 bucks listen, Canadian. I, I just checked out the system requirements at Schrodinger's Linux TBA, mm-hmm. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they have been, uh, ever since I started getting those emails, they have been, adamant that yes it will have a linux version so it's it's out and it has basically positive uh or mostly positive um reviews so that's good i guess but it's still an early access so it's no black and white where you can play like a giant monkey flings like flaming shit at villagers when they piss you off let's be honest the only thing anyone ever did in black and white was slap cows i mean yeah (laughs) come on (laughs) <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, at the end of the day, it's still a better love story than Star Citizen. So, oh yeah, <laughs> and it's still a better early access story than uh, Crazy Justice because at least everyone can play this. Coming up next, there's a new version of Wine. There's a new version of Godot, and we're gonna start playing with flare guns. Here at Linux Game Casper, like a drug. Crack no matter how hard you try, you just can't get rid of us. We're there. We're always there. And some people. Well, why do you, why, why do you say bullshit like that? Because I know if I was watching a show and somebody just said that, I would Alt F4 the fucking window out of spite. <laughs> yeah, but that's you. <laughs> also, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, See, little little, little did you know, our entire viewing like audience. This them. particular uh, brand of. Um, hallucinogenics that we provide and uh, so much so that they decided to give us money that's just crazy you guys are gonna go i gotta do a, su- a title suggestion yeah <laughs> i don't you know what i don't i don't think linux game cast is um really any sort of hallucinogenic i think it's a suicide inducer 
But if, you, and if you've grown tired of living, you can maybe uh, give us some money. You can head on over to <laughs> LinuxGameCast.com. <laughs> Click the support the show button. Make it in rain, man. Make it in rain. <laughs> Yeah. Um, geez, man. <laughs> Where you going to go with that, genius? <laughs> I, I, g- that good bad. night, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. We're done. No, uh, you can head on over to like, support the show button. We got we got Bitcoin links. We got Amazon affiliate links, Newegg affiliate links. You can click on the PayPal button, give us some money, or you can be an extra, extra cool kid and head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Cancast, where a bunch of you are giving us money every week to help us out. We got to we gotta thank... Uh, do, do we get a new uh, Patreon this week? I thought we did. No, nobody this week. Uh, we got two people last week, though. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, I, th- I think that's what it is. Uh, but, you know, if you don't want to give us money, maybe you got some hardware lying around. Maybe you work at a data center and you want to just throw us some shit. You can get on Frank's fuck wall. You can be his fuck buddy uh, if you if you send us some uh, good stuff, which I think someone did this week. Yeah. A, a terribly mysterious person uh, donated uh, to our wish zone a new power supply. So, we'll power supply APC for the audio rack, for the new hotness, the new sexiness. So, we should, in theory, never have to test this. Do you hear me, fucking fate? Not Wham. asking. Right. A complete power outage, because I think everything down here now has a legit, solid, like, between 15 to 20 minutes of uh, uninterruptible power goodness. And, I mean, that's running at full tilt. So, thank you for that. Um if you press Patreon, all four to pay respects. You make this possible. We love you for it. You get some early access. We do like to give you stuff back. But I was like, oh, excuse me. Because unfortunately, this shit costs money. We, we yeah. found out what it's going to cost us to ship a mixer to goddamn Canada, man. Motherfucker. <laughs> and it's just marginally cheaper than buying a new one. We Yeah, we're down to like, this is what we use the money for. And it's a good thing that we got it. Uh, yeah, it's just like, what degree of fuck do we want to get? Let's see if we can minimize that just a little. Maybe we can add some lube to it. Can, can, can we get 180 fuck degrees? Uh, this is true. But you do get access. You get a custom RSS feed. Uh, all patrons do. Plus, you get access to our discord with the custom rss feed we do some just random stuff plus access to our pre-pre super shows and which is our uh, production meeting it's the closest thing that we actually have to attempting to adult discussing what's going on in the show in the upcoming week and it normally breaks down into what we've been watching so it's also yeah, yeah a production meeting slash tv and film review every week mm-hmm it's a, it's a mixed bag. You, there, there's thrills, there's chills, there's tears, there's joy. There's mostly tears. Mm. Uh, but but anyways, uh, we got to get on to the news because speaking of tears, I got I got to cry some cry some alcohol. Yes, wine, as it were. And uh, well, uh, with all this uh, talk of proton, uh, let's not forget that. It very much relies on the wine. Yes, and uh, there's a new release out, uh, version 315. Uh, It has support for DPI scaling on Android, which is important, considering some uh, Android devices have very uh, high pixel density screens. Uh, The HID device support uh, is now supported in raw input, which is great if you are, say, coming from Windows and you want to play that game that isn't available on Linux. Uh, and you just can't deal with all the mouse acceleration and all the mouse crap. So, yeah, raw input is good. Um, new icons in Shell32, because that was important. They converted WinHTTP to use WinS or Windows Sockets, so that's improvement. Well, it's that, catching uh, up. To the I, I mean, it, I, th- I think it's more of a lateral move than anything. Yeah, the, the focus on Android support is interesting, because I think I think for Wine, this is a degree of future-proofing. Because we're all, if you're paying attention to the hardware side of things, especially for consumer electronics, we're kind of seeing the writing on the wall for x86, and I think once we start moving from native x86 to emulated x86 on ARM, all the shit that uh, Wine's doing for uh, Android support, we're going to start seeing some uh, some actual real gains from that. Well, do you think yeah. that's something we're going to see with wine? I, I see it definitely. I, I can see that trajectory of becoming the being able to run all the old shit application. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh, so another like thing. Here's something I wanted to bring up was: thing. Do you think we'll see a version of Wine Proton or something like that? I know we're doing a throwback to the first segment for our brothers and sisters uh, on Mac. Or are they sitting there going, "What the fuck, really"? You can well, build Proton on Mac. It's just yeah, not the, officially available. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I think I think Valve has sort of tapped out on trying to get like the good Mac support because then they got to fight with iTunes and all that shit. Mm-hmm. 
And they gotta, you know, contend with the fact that Apple wants to move away from x86 come 2020. So, mm. so like, like like I said, this 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 is where this wine shit will start coming into play once we start seeing some more consumer electronics, some like laptop and maybe even some desktop stuff based on ARM. Yes. Ghetto, it's a thing. Uh, they have a new version. This is. Uh, this is 3.1 3. 1, 1. it's cleverly yeah. disguised right at the top of the fucking page buddy I <laughs> saw Kalanu and I fucked up um, anyways uh, they have an OpenGLES 2.0 renderer they, uh, they've introduced their 3D ragdoll framework which means someone really needs to get on making brick simulator full life consequences edition oh, 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 ragdoll bricks okay I, I no, support uh, this I don't know yes. how it works no, no, throw, it. no throwing bricks at people and then having them go ragdoll no 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 now I want our bricks to have a skeletal system too yeah <laughs> hashtag brick skeleton yes um, yeah uh, they're, they're also ditching OpenSSL for embed TLS it's an interesting move maybe it's to get some better performance on mobile and of course you get your standard suite of uh, improvements for the editors for the 3D uh, for the 3D editor the 2D editor GD script gets a whole bunch of updates as well you can check out the links to all this oh uh, yeah the OS alert method will now use Zenity or K dialog instead of just using the X message so that that'll integrate a little bit nicer into your desktop environment um and uh yeah uh oh shit they have, they're uh, uh, fat shaming 32-bit uh, mac os binaries i know <laughs> they, they they too have also got the high dpi support but lot, lots of improvements a lot of this is mostly relevant to people who are using Godot to make games so if you are one of those yes. people awesome you need to you need to promote your shit we will promote your shit too mm -hmm. because yep. if you if you if you produce the linux version yeah which good and they are more than very much uh, going for that uh, mobile market because, like, the very first thing is OpenGLES 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um. Yeah, and a couple additional Linux fixes, but it's a thing. Mm -hmm. Speaking of uh, speaking of source code, uh, OpenRCT2 Roller Coaster Tycoon ty Tycoon 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 Tycoon, 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 tycoon. tycoon. Uh, Tatooine, home of Luke Sky Bicycle Man. Skywalker? Uh, no, Sky, Sky Cycler. Stark. Because uh, this is a version not 2 1, Bicycle Repair Man, bane of international communism everywhere. They have, um,. <laughs> They have some better logic to detect what version of Roller Coaster Tycoon you have installed. If you have it on Steam or through GOG, uh, it will be able to detect the specific versions. There's a bunch of other fixes for people who like uh, building uh, roller coasters. There's no Linux-specific stuff. Control-F Linux returns nothing. But, you know, it's a thing. If you like uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon, uh, this is the engine re-implementation, so you can go play it on the Linuxes. Yes. Hey, I don't see a requirement for CMake in here, so... How's that going for it? Yeah, he uses scones <laughs> instead. Scones, ninja. Uh, cool blocks. So um, maybe, maybe you're a hipster and uh, you remember the days of Amigas and games and stuff like that. Well, somebody's working to bring back a classic Amiga title, Legion Game. It's not necessarily in a working state, but I saw the project and I thought I'd give them a mention because it's under active development. It's a classic remake of the game Legion based on the official Amos source code provided by the authors. And um, dude's just working through it. I mean, if you want to kick in localization, it's uh, currently only in Polish. Uh, English version is available, though. So that's the thing. Uh, uh, re recently English. I misread that as mostly English. Mostly English, man. It's good. It's very, because that's not Polish. All right. Um, it launches, but I don't know. It's cool. I know some people really dig the uh, Amiga stuff, man. So... And it's, it's game preservation, right? It's Last important. Yep. Right. So that's 100%. Uh, what do we got up next, man? You, do you got a yoke, you know, from all the mad lifting, bro? No, 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 no. <laughs> up next, we have uh, the yoke project, which happens to be, again, another callback to the Steam segment, which uh, when Valve introduced. That's a good the, way to uh, drop your mobile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Valve introducing touch controls in the Steam Link app. Well, someone else decided, you know what? That's a good idea. Let's just turn our phones into um, controllers. And, well, they did. And I'll be damned. They did it with basically a couple of files. Uh, the server-side file is basically just the one Python file. And the uh, Android uh, app has a few more because it has to have icons and whatnot. But Pedro, it relies who uses Python? Really? Who in their right mind would ever use Python? 
Here. I don't know. Strider, maybe. You thought I said in their. You I said in their right mind. <laughs> Okay, but I have no idea. But uh, this was perhaps the best use of Python that I've actually ever seen. It's like one single script can do everything Suck on the back end. So that is actually kind of impressive for something like this. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> what's, what's also pretty neat too is uh, it supports SDL two. So if you're if you have a yep. game that has SDL two gamepad support, or it it even works with the SDL two gamepad configurator utility. So yep. that's going to be pretty handy. It's definitely a thing. So w- what's our exact use case for this? Sell it to me. You don't Do have a controller you handy? To use your phone as a controller? I, I don't <laughs> have my controller handy, but I'm going to set this bullshit. I'm going to find the controller. Um, <laughs> I'm, may, it's, may, 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 maybe you're doing a multiplayer game and you only have one controller <laughs> instead of like six, like a psychopath like me. much setup. <laughs> Yeah, Steam is just going to see it as a generic gamepad, and it's an APK that you install on your phone, and a Python file that you install. So, on so your do you actually APK. like maybe sit back and play like the jigsaw laziness game? The controller's on the other side of the room, but your mobile's right here. And you're like, mm. yeah. <laughs> yep. Would 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 you like to play a game then? Uh, yeah, I'd like to play some Trackmania, Nations United, something for Snapmania. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, over at Snapcraft, uh, snaps are a thing. They're kind of like uh, flat packs, or well, kind of like flat packs. You can't really call them app images, but apparently you can just snap this thing right into your system that supports the snaps, the most popular online PC racing game. It feels you probably know what this is. This is from uh, cool. What's the name? Snapcraft IO. No, I'm talking about the uh, NATO, NATO, oh, NATO, yeah, NATO. All right, I don't know, Pedro. I was like, you uh, hearing you through cardboard. Um, <laughs> that was a callback to the pre pre super show. Hey, go check it out, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Rick jokes. What I want to think about this is, uh, this does work apparently. I have not tried it out, but can you legally redistribute? I guess maybe re because all it does initially is you download the client. And then it downloads all the game data. So I guess maybe they could legally redistribute. Yeah, that that, that's uh, they're not actually redistributing anything. They're just uh, putting out a thing that downloads the file, which then snaps it up and contains the uh, the file system inside the snap. Listen, so, Ven, Ven Pedro, I'm very disappointed that no one has made a snap into a Slim Jim reference. No, man. Oh, yeah. That's 2017. Leave Macho Man alone. No, Macho Man is our Lord and Savior. He, he died for our him. sins, man. He had he to did. elbow Jesus. Yeah, it stopped yeah. the rapture. <laughs> That's true. That's true, man. All right, uh, one more bit. Yeah, uh, Flare. Uh, you might know it as the Free Libre Action RPG Engine. Um, it is a. Uh, it is essentially just an open source Diablo clone um, that uh, has been under development for a while. It, I think it's actually really cool because I played the shit out of Diablo 1 back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, they have some updates for version 1.07. Uh, you can now replay cutscenes, um, quest it's logs. finally available what? in best Portuguese. In best Portuguese. <laughs> yeah, Brazilian Portuguese. Uh, and, and Bulgarian. And Vietnamese. Um, but uh, now when you complete quests, it'll actually update on your quest log so you don't have to manually track it. Um, there are better icons for the items. Uh, a couple new translations. And... Uh, one of the engine itself has um, a couple improvements as well, such as the ability for having items to improve skills, and a couple updates here and there on the Empyrean campaign, which is just the base campaign that they ship with it. Because you can use, you can actually use this to make your own game. Uh, it's not just a one and done thing. It's really cool. I like it. I think you should definitely check it out. Give it a build. Give it a run on the Linux. You can get the engine or the source code or both. And it's good stuff. It's a thing. It's been around for a while, and I'm glad to see it continuing development. Before we get out of here, I do want to, I forgot to mention well, for patrons, if you're above Death Notes and above your show note access, there's open enrollment. We don't just spam everyone above that level. There's a post on Patreon. You just leave a comment. We've had a couple people get back. I just wanted to update the list. Wanted to get that in there. So when somebody's like, you're out and tell me, I just told you. All right. <laughs> All right. Coming up next, you get to yell at us later on and tell us what hypocrites we are because we're throwing chairs at Into the Breach Proton Edition. Yeah, to carry on from the uh, from the Ghostbusters reference here, we're going to cross some streams where, uh, or maybe cross some steams, as it were. We're throwing some chairs at Into the Breach, which is not a native Linux game, but it is on the compatibility list released by Valve for Proton. And so we've determined that if it's on the list, 
It's fair game for the Chairquisition. This is Into the Breach, developed by Subset Games. It's done on a custom engine. As from as mentioned before, it's playable via Proton. You can pick it up for about 15 of your local currency. What is it? The remnants of human civilization are threatened by galactic or galactic gigantic <laughs> creatures breeding beneath the Earth. You must control powerful mechs from the future to hold off this alien threat. Each attempt to save the world presents a new randomly generated challenge in this turn-based strategy game from the makers of FTL. These guys sent us some keys a while ago because they were, well, there is a native Linux version supposedly in development, but uh, we didn't decide to wait that long. So let's kick this off on Ubuntu. Ven, did you go into the breach? Latest and greatest and most stable LTS, 1804. I'm sure there's some, um, wait, yeah, something newer out that I'm not going to touch, man. Ryzen 7, 980, and one shaking Jordan later. Seriously, man. Uh, here's the thing. I was curious to see something, actually play something that was on the approved, the white list uh, with the proton powers, and this seemed like a good candidate. However, if you are running more than one X screen, you genuinely spin the wheel of Booga Booga to figure out uh, what monitor this game is going to start on, but it's not necessarily this game. This is a problem with proton. Uh, set everything to, you know, like X screen zero, not going to have the issue. So I got that sorted. And yeah, I know what I just said. There's a workaround. You can change the UX server's layout and that'll fix it. But that's one hell of a workaround for me. Anyway, it does launch. Once that's done, no problems with it. Window mode, that's good. Full screen. Hey, it's a piece of cake. That's how I played it. 3840 by 2160. And um, yeah, 60 frips, all the things, which it should. I mean, it's hipster pixel. Good looking. I dig it. Graphics. No issues, no artifacting. Uh, wouldn't expect to see that, and it wasn't there. Your controls, input for this joint, that's going to be keyboard and gerbil, and everything worked as planned. So uh, outside of the launching dickery, you know, I, I give it a solid three. All right. On Fedora, 2864-bit with the i7-6700K and the GTX 1080Ti. I was about to say 980, but I haven't been using that for a while. Um, yeah, it fucking launches... It's locked at 60 FPS, so I mean you can play this on the Switch, man. It's it's fine. Um, the graphics are very very pixely. They're it's well done pixel art. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of Advanced Wars for the GBA, but a lot prettier. And uh, controls, you go click click boom. So that's going to be four chairs for me. Yeah, uh, over here uh, I have the UHD monitor set as the primary. So on Solus 3.99999 with the uh, GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 1600, it uh, always launches smack in the middle of it. Unless you move the window, at which point the next time you launch it, it actually remembers where the window was. So that's good. Uh, there's a lot of Unity games that could stand to learn a little bit from them. Uh, the performance, yeah, there's a frame limiter option and you really do want to keep it on. Yes, you can have 3,000 frames a second if you want, but come on. Uh, there's uh, nothing odd to report when it comes to graphics or the audio. Everything worked as well as you'd expect. Uh, it even though it's running through Proton, so good on them. And yeah, for the controls, you click the mouse and hit the buttons on the keyboard. It's a turn-based game so you get to take your time and i also liked how it gives you like a little bit of um a preview of what's going to happen if you move uh to a certain position or you fire a certain weapon that causes the uh the enemy knockback yes so, it makes yeah. it very clear that even though you're about to shoot your own unit giggity but it will have a desired effect yes <laughs> and uh yeah it's uh four ga uh, four chairs for me <laughs> all right well there you go might have some problems if you have crazy X setups, but, you know, that is, that's part of the course of the Proton, at least for now. How about Funven? Did you enjoy Into the Breach? This is turn-based strategy, man. You know I hated this game, and that's not necessarily entirely true for the most part, kind of, on a Wednesday after 6 p.m. I honestly didn't hate it. It's really, really simple turn-based checkers. That's a good way to describe it for me. There is a lot of depth in this, if that's your jam, but I was at definitely able to vin my way through this game. Vin way? Yeah, that's the thing. It's the same thing as the wrong way, only faster. Um, being able to upgrade the mechs, that's nice. That's a good mechanic. It kept me interested. Uh, smashing monsters, you can't go wrong with that. That's kind of fun. I like the uh, whole idea of you know your mech punch. You move baddies, and as Pedro said, when you shoot things, that can also spread out the baddies, do some damage, and uh, just like noping things with tanks. Or the claymore, the mortar. That, that, that Keeps things interesting behind buildings and all that fun stuff. 
It does have bonus objectives, but you can safely ignore them. Hashtag Venway, uh, which I did. You can't go back and do those. So mm, keep that in mind. After like the just getting it up and running, you know, after figuring out, okay, if we're going to proton anything, we just got to set my first three monitors uh, as one X screen. I had a really solid like 45 minutes, nothing compared to what Jordan's going to tell you of, you know, just time vampired with me. And I think I enjoyed myself. I think it did. I mean, I I'm normally would give something like this, like two, but I'll give this a solid three chairs because I could pick this up. This is something you can pick up and just fuck around with. And if you're like me, you're not, you don't want to get like super in depth with it. It delivers at a good time. Jordan. No, you're not going to give that cheers. I, I already I, did. I, yeah. It's usually at the end, whatever. <laughs> Jordan, Jordan, what, what Jordan stupid. No, that's, that's not a thing. No, um, subset. Why, 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 why you do this five B? I, I, so I knew I knew going in that I was gonna like this because it has grid movement, giant robots, turn-based strategy, giant monsters. I'm, I'm I'm sold, and the game really doesn't fail to deliver. The gameplay is really really solid. Um, it reminds me a lot of Fourth Edition Dungeons and Dragons, which a lot of people really hate, but I thought it was a very well designed game. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis on forced movement and the fact that directly killing the monsters isn't always the best option. Usually a stalling strategy, because you, you have a certain number of turns you need to complete the uh, your object- objectives in. If you can stall that out, you'll just win. Uh, which is pretty neat. It gives you a lot of al- alternative objectives. And it's a nice little deconstruction of, like, a lot of giant robot fight- fighting games are just like, yeah, blow up the fucking city. Who cares? This, is- this one actually penalizes you for killing civilians, which makes sense given the context of the game. It's very, it's very good uh, ludonarrative harmony, in my opinion. Um, yeah, you, you can upgrade your mechs. Uh, if you fuck up, you can always jump to a new timeline, which basically causes you to restart the game, but you can always take one of your, uh, one of your dudes with you. And if they've gotten any cool abilities from leveling up, you get to carry that on over to the next game, which is pretty neat. There's also a uh, replay ability where if you fuck up one turn, you have, uh, the ability to rewind. And there are a couple characters that will give you the ability to do that more, more than once, which again, very, very cool. Uh, the soundtrack, though, it's a little too FTL-ish. I was hoping for something a little bit different. Maybe that's just Ben pretty style, but it's like the Steve Harris style of, you know that one bass riff, and that's kind of your jam, which is all right. All I know is that I entered a bit of a fugue state while I was playing it, and about three and a half hours later, I looked at the time, I'm like, oh, well, I gotta go eat something. Um, I'm probably gonna pick this up on the Switch, too, just because I really want to play it on the toilet, although I should probably try it with the Steam Link app first. Regardless, I really enjoyed this game. I knew I was going to like it going into it, and I then had to stop me from playing it during the pre-pre-super shows, and so that means that it's probably worth about four cheers. Yeah, it uh, it plays similar to chess with how the different units have different uh, movement ranges, and all the weapons have different knockbacks, and like Jordan said, there is very much that emphasis on the knockback. So I really like that aspect, and if introducing mechs and giant bugs to chess is the way to get me to, to actually enjoy it, then kudos. Subset, you, you did it. Uh, yeah, it's uh, there are very few things that are as satisfying as causing like a cascade of death uh, w- with a well-placed shot. I've killed... Uh, my record right now is three bugs in one shot with the uh, little mortar tank. So that was... Uh, that made me feel good inside. Which doesn't happen often, but yeah. Uh, if I had to pick one thing to hate, and I kind of do in order to justify the score I'm about to give it, it's the energy slash escort quest type mechanic. Because you really have to be careful with not letting the bugs kill the buildings or take a pot shot at a building just because it's going to kill a bug or two. It's really, really annoying. And it's so fundamental and it's such a core mechanic of how the rest of it was built that I think the game suffers a little bit for it. That's that again, that's totally on me. I don't really like having to worry that much about cities because the bugs, they, most of the time they just ignore you and go straight for the city. It's like, what mm-hmm. are, come on. So yeah, that, uh, that, cheesed me out a little bit on the game but certainly not enough to dig it more than one chair so 
three chairs it is. All right, that's a. Uh, it's nice to have a game that we all kind of universally enjoy. We play a lot of crap for the chair positions, mm-hmm. and it's all. It's oh, all. Yeah. It's always good to have like a good quality game. Um, and I, de- I highly recommend burning a heretic purchase on it if this is your gem. Um, or pick it up on one of the other married platforms available. You should totally play it on Linux so that you can mm-hmm. well, tell subset, hey, get on that native port. One of the things oh. you can sit back and hopefully they will deliver a native port. I got to be honest, though, my gut organs telling me if this is something that rolled out day one on the whitelist with Proton, this might be it. They're, they're, they may also produce a browser version because they did that with FTL as well. Mm-hmm. So that would that yeah. would that would also be the other way of going about it. Anyways, coming up next, we have a sizable hate mail segment where Pedro gets to talk more about his Xbox and how he loves to have sex with it. And it's about time we wrap this up because you're probably tired. Well. Tired is perhaps the most accurate nope. word. Uh-uh. Of this entire to us. time I've been mesmerized by your blue shock mount. <laughs> I'm tired of you. Blue. Oh, that's fair. And if you too uh out there listening to us right now are also tired of me, feel free to go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, fill out the form. It's pretty easy. You just have to click the captcha and Google might ask you to train their AI. But that's just par for the course in the interwebs nowadays. So this week, we do actually have some very um, poignant emails, I guess. You tried to use a word. (laughs) The the first one comes from uh, Wailing Fungus, and he says, hating on SteamOS. Dear gentlemen, I am hating SteamOS right now. I'm at a Steambox. So did I. Uh, I downloaded the latest SteamOS Brewmaster 2.0 and installed it. Uh, The installation process went fine and came up with the login screen, but I can't log in. The controller, the keyboard, nor the mouse allowed me to log in. Uh, Looking online shows that many people are experiencing this issue. Uh, Wow, my delivery is gone. Uh, I tried following several guides to fix this. None of them worked. I think some of the key steps were missing. I am an intermediate Linux user the hell is that and could follow their and couldn't follow their instructions but it didn't go uh the way that it said it would perhaps let me know if uh i run into uh this issue uh and how i fix it when he installs steamos uh i currently have ubuntu mate installed with the steam client but when i exit games big picture mode that's loose focus which makes me have to get up off the couch uh and go to the keyboard Defeats the point of big picture mode. Your pal. I think, uh, no, no, I think here's it's actually thing. pronounced hash dollar at percent. Right. And <laughs> seriously, man, get your shit to fucking gather. <laughs> it's way too late for me, man. <laughs> no one cares. You know, but yeah, you can't really say anything negative because Pedro couldn't figure out how to install SteamOS. Uh, that's that's the thing on the uh, Steambox 360. I tried to install Steamos, it wouldn't boot at all. And the the latest version I could find was Brewmaster 2.0. And I was kind of hoping that they would have uh, the clockwork image available right now, but they don't. And uh, push comes to shove, you can run Ubuntu. Uh, so as long as you install the Steamos session, it'll set you up with the Steamos compositor and it'll set the uh, SteamOS session proper where you can just do everything from the controller and it works. Uh, I left a couple of links in the show notes so you can have a look at them. Uh, You could also do it with Fedora, which was what I did because it has a newer kernel and it supports the 2400G better, but uh, it's a bit more fiddly. A little bit. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Hi, penguin. <laughs> I, I get to, I, I get bored easily. Um, yeah, l- 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 lick that, l- l- lick that penguin, qu- Cloaca, Pedro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, Steam Os- Steam Os- could do a lot of better job of creating, cre- uh, trying to uh, create a better out of the box experience for sure. But mm-hmm. then there, there, there's also the whole because they're on Debian and because they're on a slower release cycle, even with backported stuff, they still can't get new hardware support as quickly as say something like Fedora does, where they're just basically tracking mainline kernel and right. get all the updates. Um, and you got to remember, uh, I don't think anyone should feel bad for not getting SteamOS up and running because it's Valve time and that shit's going to be in beta until the heat death of the universe. 
<laughs> yeah. All right. Up next. All right. Up next from Dimco uh, in wonderful broken English. I wasn't sure where to put this shit. Was tempted to put it in the hate section since it's a clearly hate message, but it's not a hate message to you. It's a hate message for the likes of Dragonfin Soup Devs, Forsaken Fortress Devs. This new Steam Play thing is perfect for comrades. You can download games you wouldn't otherwise be able to commend on, even if you own I those games. I commended on a collection. game once, man. <laughs> it was don't, nasty. Don't, don't do it. It's rough. Oof. And take a dump on them, which I suggest everyone to do for those two dev above mentioned. Years after Doe's release, comrade get no satisfaction. So apparently we're getting mail from Mick Jagger. I don't know. I'm just thinking. Yeah. I, I, I was playing those lyrics in my head just then. It's like, comrade. Because I try <laughs> and I try and I try. <laughs> All right. Dear Comrade Jordan, I heard relationship with no satisfaction are bad for you. If I'm into chocolate game and I can force them on those developers, am I morally justified? I don't know what a chocolate game is, but it sounds super sexy. But I mean, here's here's the thing. We talked about this in the in the earlier section of the show when we we're discussing Steam stuff. Yeah, lots of lots of sketchy devs who have incomplete or busted Linux versions really need to remove those from the marketplace, except they won't because people will still buy them and sometimes they'll forget Jordan, to dude, run them through the refund I mean, puddle, see? Like seriously, quit being a gatekeeper, okay? Uh <laughs> we need to be grateful. I told that- you I'm Keymaster. I am Vince Clortho. I'm fucking Weren't you watching bitch. Ghostbusters? Uh check this out. I mean, you need to be grateful that they hit export, uploaded the repo, and never tested it. You, you just quit being ungrateful and entitled, okay? <laughs> and here, here, here's the thing: no one, no one is forcing anyone to play games. You're so toxic. <laughs> I'm addicted to you, baby. I'm just like Britney Spears. I'm just as hot as her. <laughs> well, at least these days. Um, <laughs> there's some mental image for you. You know what? Moving on. Up next, Heretic purchases. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take this one. Uh, Proton, Heretic Protons. This comes from Richard. He writes. I would have to disagree that purchasing with Steam Play is a heretic purchase. Yes, you, you're buying a Windows game, but Valve said in their announcement that it counts as a Linux purchase. If you do that and it works satisfactorily enough, it's fine, period. If it doesn't work, comma, it's a heretic purchase. Thanks for doing the good question mark. Good thing throwing that in there, man. Don't want to give us a bad rap of helping uh, work. Richard, so... To Richard, I will say, that's some fine fan fiction you have going on right there, son. It is. Uh, I wholly approve of uh, people uh, writing fantasy stuff. Uh, Unfortunately, what is and what is not a heretic purchase is not determined by a store that sells video games. That's Valve, if you're wondering. Uh, They don't get to make the rules. We get to make the rules on that because we kind of created the system. (laughs) Uh, and 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 to, I mean to that point, the whole point of the hair tech purchase system is to encourage people to buy games that are natively developed on Linux mm-hmm. to yep. ensure that you know we have. <laughs> I, you, you know, hey, hey, listen, we're not going door to door knocking on you. Be like, hey man, have you heard about the chairs? Would you like to be, ex- experience the blessing of Gay Ben's sticky nipples? Wait a minute, you're not doing. I'm. You're getting dinged on this year's performance report. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but but here, but here, here's the thing, right? We want to encourage people to release games on Linux. We want to encourage people to develop games on Linux, and that's what the whole heretic purchase is. And you're not going to be drawn and quartered for being a heretic. You're just going to be blatantly shunned here's by this thing. jerk. I, I think this is very important. A heretic getting into there that's opt in. You know, listen, you can do whatever you want because it's Linux, man. This is all about freedom doing stuff like that if you want to get into that system you just got to play by the rules richard and it's cool but you can have your own system like most cults i mean uh religions uh you you can branch off from our system create your own system man it's like cloning our own git repo but you know again our heretic system that we have implemented of your five purchases predates steam on linux hashtag hallowed all the chairs and I would, I don't know, maybe playing Richard's advocate for a little bit. Richard's advocate. I would say. You, yeah. you, you mean Dick's advocate? <laughs> sure. Uh, I will play Dick's advocate. Uh, if Valve are willing to put their backing behind a game to put it on the whitelist, like we did for the chairs just now, I would say that 
wouldn't count, but that would be something I would have to propose to the chairs, and I've already no, lost. No, that, 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 that is the hot fingers. heresy, Pedro. So, that is- no. Pedro, the chairs don't have legs, but they would kick you in the dick. <laughs> the yes. Chairs, the chairs, have, chairs have legs. These are beanbag chairs. They're lawn chairs. That's the joke. No. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Chairs don't okay. have legs. Fight, fight me IRL. I'm like nine feet tall, man. Hey, man, I'm like 16 feet tall this week. <laughs> yeah, but it's only you're 16 feet tall one week and then like two inches but, tall. But it's only week. the left I, leg. I, 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 yeah, I, I got to catch you on the right week. Right. And then we'll fight. <laughs> it's one of those things. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're, I, I think that was the maximum fuck up we could achieve. <laughs> so um, we're, we're going to have to. Um, that's right. Cue the music. You can always find us around 930 Eastern Standard Moon Time. That's what we're here. Um, being gatekeepers and toxic and entitled and whatever the uh, you phrases to score imaginary internet points is this week. I'm Vin Stone. You can find me at Vin Stone on the Twitters plus Vin Stone, Google Plus, type in Vin Stone, and you'll find pictures of Jordan. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, I'm Jordan Spunk. If you Google me, you won't find pictures of Vin or Pedro. I think that's a good thing, question mark. You can find me at Brennan Food on Twitter, plus Jordan Spunk, plus. I am Pedro Mateusz. If you Google me, you can find me, I guess. I'm one of the results on the first page. It, it varies from day to day. So, yeah, or you could just go to Twitter and type in at an account at four. That's F O U R. You could read it. It's like right there somewhere down there. Um, or on Google Plus, that ghost town of a uh, social network. That's uh, plus Pedro Mateusz. And uh, yeah, posting stuff there. All right, uh, hang on, buttons there. All right, we got buttons together. This has been brilliant. We're gonna roll some credits and uh, look look for your name. It's gonna be awesome because we, we like doing that. It's one of our little ways to get back. Hey, I'm buying time. There it is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong thing. We're not Star Wars, <laughs> or are we? I don't know. Kathleen Kennedy, do I get to cash those paychecks now? Hey man, look. Does it, does it turn out that made, does baby? It, does it turn out turns out that Pedro is Ray's mother and Jar Jar is the father? Who knows? Stay tuned Boom. for episode nine. Ta da! <laughs> it's the master uh, race. I gotta I gotta ask though, who's fucking screaming that word gatekeepers? Because oh, not us. It, it's like the new thing of uh, they're like oh yeah. If you have an opinion uh, on the internet, you're a gatekeeper. Mm-hmm. No, that 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 that. No, what what it boils down. There was a, I'm sure some people saw it. Uh, They'll chime in in a second with the stream delay. The uh, like meme they made with the Walking Dead. It was like new Linux gamers. Then they had the guy like pushing them down with the two by four from the top of the building, and it was like, oh, the what the gatekeepers. (laughs) Like I don't even know exactly what they were referring (laughs) to, but it made me laugh. So I'm like, okay, I'll roll with it. Like here's the deal. It's not it's not gatekeeping. We're not saying people can't play games on Linux. We're not saying that you can't use Wine. We're just saying that we are trying to encourage. And we're putting a stupid little spin on it because we're stupid idiots about just trying to support native game development on Linux. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yep. That's it. We are we are in no way, shape, or form at all saying that you cannot use Linux. Except you for Pedro. Use Linux. Well, I mean that, that, that's, uh, we're not talking I about have... having an inability to use Linux. We're saying, like, <laughs> stopping physically stopping people from using Linux. I'm not saying go out there and kill a distribution, but if you did, you'd, you'd score brownie points with me. Uh, then, right, we, you would name it uh, Fondue 2. We'll call it, <laughs> we'll call it Pedros. Let, let, we're going to die in a fire before Pedro kills another distribution. <laughs> Five dudes. Rip 